Hey guys, it's Lauren. Um, saying hello, mostly. Thought I'd ramble at you for a little while. Um, I get lots of ideas for things to make videos about and things to talk about, and it never really plays out kind of the way I think it should in my head. Um, and the end result is that I don't make as many videos. Um, so, I guess we'll have to work with that. Um, I've been pretty busy with work and stuff, and it's the end of the term, so I'm doing a lot of grading and getting ready for holiday things. Um, I finished reading um, Alex Mars, Witches of America, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I put a review of it up on thornthewitch.com um, whenever I finished, I guess a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to make a video to talk about this book. I kind of, it just that it sort of triggered other thoughts um, that I've been rattling around in my head um, since then. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, this book came out on Halloween and uh, basically the internet kind of blew up or certain, certain factions of the internet blew up. Um, if you go to the Amazon.com page, um, a lot of the reviews are really scathing, like really just like vitriolic. And um, there were a few reviews that appeared on Patheos and just all over kind of like the pagan blogosphere. Blogosphere. I always feel like an asshole when I use that word, but there you have it. Um, the pagan blogosphere was angered by this book largely. And... I naturally, because like that stuff sort of, that, that kind of thing piques my interest. I of course had to read it. Um, and I, you know, I sat down and I read it in a few days and I, it, it, I didn't see what the big deal was basically. Um, and you can read kind of more about the specifics in in the review I wrote, but I was really struck by how angry people were, like how the sorts of things that people were saying about Mar and about this this text, and um, like it ma it made it sound like she had, you know, like this was just purely exploitative, and this woman had just like sort of conned people and taken advantage of trust and worked her way into these into these witch communities and then like written lies and um you know obviously I'm these are not the, the people that she's writing about are not people I know like I'm not in any sort of position to say what is true and what is not um but I read this book and it to me it fits very squarely in a genre that's really popular right now and has been for several years right like these these religious seeker books um, so if you've read, um, what is this kid's name? It's over here. Kevin Roos. Kevin Roos is the unlikely disciple about the kid who decides he's going to go to Liberty University for a semester. Um, and then uh, some other texts about basically journalists or would-be journalists who go amongst various kinds of uh, fringe, right, religious communities and then write about their, their experiences. They're basically like memoirs. Um, and I've read a ton of them, right? And they follow particular kinds of patterns. It doesn't really matter what the religious tradition is. They're, they're pretty formulaic. And that's, that's how this book struck me. Um, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of like more cliche than anything else. Um, and not like as a pagan and as a witch, like I don't find this, this book offensive at all. Um, there's nothing in here that I didn't recognize that I haven't seen um, or heard people talk about, or, you know, witnessed firsthand, like, I just, it's kind of, it's kind of cliche stuff. Um, so in my mind, like, the stuff, I could see being upset as one of the people who is, you know, one of the central figures who's being documented, provided that Mar is, in fact, misrepresenting them. But even the people that she describes, you know, like, whether or not stuff is oath bound, right? Like, I, like I don't know. Um, it's not my tr it's not my tradition, so I don't know. But um, the stuff that she's saying about these individuals doesn't strike me as, you know, doesn't strike me as negative to me. I mean, like she follows um, the folks that she follows around. To to me, she's very um, 
she they're obviously people that she really admires um so i don't know but the I guess the stuff that really strikes me as far as how people are reviewing the book is how how quick people are to say that they didn't read it. They they read a review or they saw what it was about and they were just horrified and they responded without reading the book. And I saw a lot of comments on blogs that said things like, you know, oh, thanks for writing this review so that I don't have to read this book or yes, that's really horrible, like I'm going to steer well away from this book or blah blah blah. Like that's fine, but like you don't you don't then get to put forth any kind of informed opinion. I don't know, like I just maybe it's because my impulse is always to read the thing. Like if if somebody says something is terrible and it has this kind of impact, like in my mind that says that you should read it. Uh, maybe you shouldn't funnel money to the author or the publisher, right? Um, but but you should find a way to read it. Um, if it has that kind of influence and that kind of impact, then whether or not you agree with the context, uh, with the contents, whether or not the content is good, it it's something that's like clearly worth reading and considering and considering in an educated sort of way. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to try and do. Um, so yeah, there that is. Um, but the stuff that. I've been thinking about since reading Witches of America is I really identified with Alex Marr in a lot of places. Like she has these moments where she's in ritual and she's really like, for, like, first of all, I should say that I don't feel like she's being exploitative. Like I feel like her, and I don't think she's being voyeuristic. Um, and I wouldn't call her a tourist any more than I would call any other kind of spiritual seeker a tourist. I don't think that's fair. Like, I don't think that's a very nuanced way of understanding what she's doing. Um, she strikes me as somebody who desperately wants to believe something. And when she describes what she's seeing and the kinds of experiences she has and the things that she tries, she repeatedly does it from the standpoint of wondering what's wrong with herself or wondering why it is that these other people have these experiences that she can't have. And then she goes on to compare herself, particularly to the other women in the book, right? Uh, so like one of the critiques that people raise is that she body shames, right? I don't see that at all. Um, she talks a lot about women's bodies, that's true. But she always does it in the context of comparing it to herself because she, this is somebody who obviously doesn't like themselves very much, like in a typical kind of like struggling to find yourself late 20s, early 30s sort of way, right? Like, um, she, she's, everything is comparative because I think she, there's a certain kind of like vulnerability and insecurity that she's trying to put across. And to me, that's, that's loud and clear. Um, so she repeatedly finds herself in these different kinds of rituals and she finds herself over and over again being unmoved, basically, or being moved in different ways and then having to stop and question why. And, like, I remember being in those kinds of places and finding myself in those kinds of places now sometimes. You know, you, you find yourselves amongst other kinds of pagans and, you know, you, they're obviously having really strong experiences that you just can't get on board with. Um, and I think there are good and bad ways to acknowledge that and respond to that, okay? Um, but I really appreciated her tackling those things openly. Like, that was... Alex Marr is somebody who I recognize. Let, let me put it that way. Um, so then it got me wondering, well, is this, is this a generational thing, right? Like, Alex Marr and I are about the same age. Um, so when she's talking about, for example... There is an early passage in the text where she is at a Dianic ritual and she's talking about, I don't remember how she put it, how she puts it, but she basically says something to the effect of she found herself suddenly surrounded by second wave feminism, right? Like a particular kind of feminism that she recognized, but basically didn't jive with. Um, and there were some people out there who interpreted this as her saying that this kind of feminism was, um, you know, like no longer relevant or she was being dismissive of it. And I don't think that's what she was doing at all. She was, um, not relating and openly not relating, um, which is not the same as dismissing something. Um, so an example, right? Like there are movements within feminism that 
really emphasize um, really emphasize the the woman's body, right? The capacity to menstruate, for example. Um, and there was a lot of talk about this sort of thing, like femininity residing in the physical body. And that was something that, like Mar, as a single woman with no children, couldn't necessarily jive with. And I feel that, Alex Mar, like as a woman, as a feminist, I feel really alienated in those kinds of spaces. Not because I think that kind of feminism isn't relevant or important, but because it's just not something that speaks to me, particularly on a religious level. Um, so, I don't know, like when she's making those kinds of observations, I'm just, I think, oh, well, that's not because Alex Marr is an asshole. That's because Alex Marr is in her 30s. Like, I get it. That makes sense. She grew up in the same kind of climate amongst similar kinds of people that I probably did, right? Um, big cities, probably, like, more education than anybody needs, right? University background. Um, you know, like, I get it. I also get when she's describing meeting other kinds of pagans who belong to um, other social classes, right? And she's talking about, um, you know, being being out in the woods and people who are into, into um, more subsistence living and, um, you know, they're farming their own land or they're, I don't know, they're, they're tending animals or whatever it is. Like there, there are groups of pagans out there who that's how they express their, their religiosity, right? Is this kind of get back to nature, um, you know, working with your hands, doing things in the earth, going out into the woods, right? Like abandoning, trying to get off the, off the grid, right? Um, and this is something that she's fascinated by, but isn't necessarily, again, something she can relate to. Okay, again, like, not because Alex Marr is an asshole, but because she's a city dweller, right? She's a 30-something city person. Um, so, I don't know, like, and that's a regional thing, too. She does a lot of her work out in California, and having visited California and been around California pagans, you know, not, not to a great extent, but I can tell you they're really fucking different than what's happening out here in the Southeast. You know, like there's, there's a different political atmosphere. There's a different cultural, like it's like, it's really different. Um, and I think if that makes you feel alienated and it, makes you not want to be involved with particular people or with particular groups, again, it's, it's probably not because you're an asshole. It's because, like, there's regional variation. I don't know. So it was really easy for me to attribute Alex Mars' issues to other things aside from her just being horrible. And I think a lot of, a lot of the reviews just really... I don't know. I think there are more nuanced ways to read this book, which is not to say that I think it's a great book, or that it's good writing, um, but like I, I don't think that it necessarily warrants the reaction that it got. Like people are losing their shit over this book, and unless you were personally wronged by her in some way that is not apparent to me in this work, um, then I don't, I don't get what the big deal is. So, anyway, those are my thoughts, and that that was kind of my takeaway. Um, She's kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, she's an American cliche, right? This whole, like, religious marketplace, seeker culture, sort of, you know, spiritual but not religious. I don't know, like, Alex Marr is working through something that's really common within the, con and she's doing it within the context of, of paganism, and pagans are offended, but she's not really doing anything new. Um, so... Anyway, I think that if it piques your curiosity, you should give it a shot. If you're into the whole seeker narrative thing, right, the whole spiritual explorer thing, you'll probably dig it. Um, if you approach this from the standpoint that it's supposed to be a history of witches of America or that it's supposed to be, like, scholarly ethnography, Alex Mara is not a scholar. Like, she's pretty open. Like, this is openly a memoir. Like, it's obviously a memoir. You can, you can flip through the first couple of pages and you know, read the dust jacket. And it's very clear that this is not Alex Mars' attempt at being Margot Adler. Like, that's not what's going on. Um, so I think it's, I think it's unfair to judge it. Like, she probably could have picked a better title, but like beyond that, um, anyway. So there's that. And I'm going to go and go running now. So hope you guys have a good night.